This episode of Market Talk is brought to you by Growmark FS. Keeping up on the latest in ag is a challenge to say the least, but there are experts nearby ready to help. You'll find them at your local FS. You can trust them to bring you customized agronomic grain and energy solutions born of the latest thinking. That's because FS specialists receive continuous training that keeps them current on the latest trends, practices, and technologies. So you'll get local expertise that's both exceptional and up to date. Visit FSSystem.com to learn how FS is bringing you what's next. And joining us now to take a look at the market trade after we saw Monday's action mostly red on the screen in grains and oil seeds and in the energy market mixed activity in livestock. We're joined by our good friend John Heimberg with Total Farm Marketing. John, good to uh, catch up with you again. Hope you had a good weekend. Yeah, we did. Nice weekend here in Wisconsin overall. A little state fair action for our last weekend. So got to see that uh, lovely festival that they have down there. So, but yeah, it was a good weekend overall here. Well, good deal. Well, John, let's take a look at the market trade. Grains and oil seeds on Monday. Uh, a lot of pressure there. A couple different factors. Um, you know, we could point to weather with some rains moving through parts of the western core belt and uh, also cooler temperatures across much of the core belt. Also, the China economic news. Uh, that felt like a pretty big weight on the day. Uh, anything one or the other really stand out to you or did it all just kind of combine to move us to the downside on Monday? I think it all kind of combined with things. I mean, you kind of look at the way the market traded through the overnight session. We started pressured right off the get go, not as strong, obviously, as we were by the middle of the night. Uh, but, you know, that was the rain forecast and then bringing those rains into eastern Nebraska, western Iowa, which did materialize today. And I'll just you know, talking to one client out in that area today, he was grateful to get something. It wasn't, you know, a pile, but it was still wet, you know, he said. So that was something at least he was encouraged. I don't know what his final totals would be, but, you know, again, nothing major in terms of total coverage, but good coverage and at least some moisture. Uh, then, the, you know, the economic news hit in the middle of the night. And that's when the market really shifted down when that Chinese news came through that they that they went ahead and cut interest rates to try to stimulate the economy. We're seeing some, you know, GDP and growth numbers that are declining there in China, watching the housing sector struggle. And then they also talk about unemployment in the younger set, that 20 to 30 year old group was pushing 20% in China. So there's some things going on there that we've been kind of watching for a few weeks now and getting some more confirmation on all those things. And realistically, that could be the bigger issue. You know, that sent the crude oil prices tumbling four to five dollars a barrel. That spilled over into the grains and really kicked in the selling spree because obviously, you know, they're still the world's largest consumer. And if they're getting if they've got a bit of a cold in terms of their economy, it affects that commodity sector first, even though the stock market kind of shook the news off today and at least has been trading higher most of the day. Well, John, we did moderate off our lows in grains and oil seeds and in crude a little bit as well. I took that as a, a positive sign anyway as we went through Monday's trade action, especially the wheat market kind of clawed its way back towards unchanged. I know still not a great day, but maybe that was a, a bright spot that we came off the lows as well as we did. Yeah, you know, touching on that wheat market, I, I think we talked about it before, building a little bit of a round bottom there and had the chance to break it this morning down 20 plus again on the overnight session. You saw those buyers step in. Now we're still negative on the day, but I'll still take something that's trading 15, 18 cents off the low at the end of the day and, you know, kind of holding in there, building a little bit of a, you know, bull flag. We'll see if it can, can break out there. Well, obviously, we're going to need some news. You know, with China making that move in the interest rates, that obviously brought, strengthened up the dollar. So that was some of the selling pressure in the commodity sector overall. You know, corn market today, December corn especially, it was what we call an inside day. It traded within Friday's range. You know, we did come off the lows, so we'll have to see if we get some follow through tomorrow, you know, one way or another. Soybean market looks a little bit more threatened with its trade action today. Yeah, it did come off some of those lows. That was probably some more profit taking and squaring up off the hard trade before we get the crop ratings out here this afternoon. You know, so we'll have to see what those numbers give us as we're, you know, still expecting to see this crop decline a little and, you know, maybe confirm what that corn yield is from the USDA report and question whether that bean yield number is correct after Friday's uh, report came out. Yeah, and I was going to talk about Friday's report a little bit with you and a great segue because, you know, a higher soybean yield, a slightly lower corn yield from USDA. But, you know, overall, it just feels like this soybean market, uh, obviously, those were conditions as of August 1st. So what's the September report going to look like? And another thing to think about, too, that we don't want to lose sight of, 
this wasn't boots on the ground reporting from USDA. This was farmer survey and, you know, digital yield data, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, getting that completely accurate picture painted, one has to wonder, you know, that September report may be, uh, maybe something else to really keep uh, in the forefront here as we move forward. And it will be. It's become now the major report in terms of information because, again, you can't meet field surveys. You can't beat measuring actual you know, data that's out there versus the producer numbers coming in or going off of weather models because sometimes obviously those can be very inaccurate based on just you know, what conditions are. You know, if you go look at crop conditions, corn conditions are slightly below average. Therefore, the reduction off the you know, trend line yield of 177 down to where we are now. Soybean conditions are steady to slightly above the five-year average, and therefore they've verified, validated that move a little bit higher in the yield. Again, well, we'll get out there and we'll see. Now, you know, we're still in the window where beans can get put together. You know, some of these rains, that's why we're seeing pressure on the bean market, may help those late beans out, you know, kind of pull them out of the woods a little bit here. But again, we'll see what the coverage and the totals are in the next few days. You know, so that was probably some of the selling pressure that came into the market. You know, we'll have to really kind of watch where we're at here. Beans got good demand story underneath them. Export shipments are fairly solid today, keeping us well within shooting range of what the USDA was targeting for beans. You know, so those things are still supportive of this market overall. Maybe we're just moving ourselves into a little bit of a sideways, sideways lower bias based on the weather if it does stay a little bit on the cooler weather side as we're forecasting. John, talking risk management a little bit, if I'm a producer and I haven't uh, protected downside risk at this point, you, you look at uh, the markets here starting off with a negative tone this week and got that USDA report obviously out of the way now and it feels like weather going to be pretty volatile here in the markets moving forward the rest of August. Uh, I mean, what are some general thoughts risk management wise here? Would it be smart to get some floors locked in? I know we've talked about this a bunch, but I always like to reiterate it for, for some folks who maybe haven't done that yet. Yeah, these markets are very moody. Uh, things can jump around very, very quickly. You know, just a couple headlines and, you know, beans are down 60 to 70 cents at one time today. Again, you still got to protect yourself. First off, just make sure we're looking at the calendar. It's September or September is right around the corner, end of the marketing year. This is that window we typically see prices just slide because, you know, we got producers cleaning out bins, getting ready for the new crop in, end users all of a sudden just say, hey, we're good. And you see the cash market fall apart. And we haven't seen that yet this year. So and maybe it won't happen. We'll see. That's a number that we'll figure out down the road in terms of the old crop supply. But, you know, even look at last year, we had a big yield cut on the corn market off that same August report. We rallied that day, fell back, and then we proceeded to lose a dollar into the September report. Soybeans, you know, kind of rallied a couple days after that USDA report last August and lost $2 into the lows in October. You know, so again, just seasonality, not that it, you know, holds true every year. Every year is a little bit different. And, you know, obviously we got a lot of things point in different directions this year, so maybe it won't come to that case. But just having something underneath this market is probably just a good play. Plus, you just start looking at the geopolitical side of things. You know, the Taiwan issue is not going away. I'd see with those that group of representatives landing there again this morning un unannounced does not help those relations. You know, again, what's going on in terms of that Chinese economy? You don't know how fast things quickly can spin. So making sure you keep some level of protection underneath the market, whether well, it's just safety valve, cheap out of the money puts just to protect you in case we wake up and we're down 40, 50 cents three days in a row. John, how about that livestock market on Monday? It, cattle started higher, reversed lower. Hogs started lower, reversed higher. What'd you see in the protein sector on Monday? Well, that hog market still tied to that cash market. August came off the books, big discount or big premium over the October contract. And so we're maybe tightening that gap up. I really like the performance of October as well as that December contract today. You know, challenging a potential breakdown, did come off those lows. October still didn't quite get back to those contract highs, but December put a new high back in today on the close. So that just tells you there's a little money supporting that market. Again, we'll have to just continue to watch the direction of cash. Again, a window where we can roll over a little bit here, especially with the post Labor Day demand. You know, so that's a little bit cautious. Cattle market just kind of felt like it traded that today as well, too. You know, we're past that Labor Day buying window. You know, we're going to see the retailers get their Labor Day marketing plans out there. You know, we'll see what cash comes in this week. We're expecting things to, to continue to hold firm, at least from talking producers at the end of the week last week. Sound like the Packers are still looking for cattle and that spread between choice and select stays fairly supportive. So we'll have to watch that. 
if we can get some break here. But again, we may be getting close to that you know seasonal high type in the cash. But I still think this market's got a lot of support going forward, just given the numbers as well as the demand that's out there, whether it's domestically or internationally for the meats in general. Well, John, uh, before I let you go, any uh, final thoughts you have for us here on this Monday? You know, the equity market's been on a heck of a run. The S&P's been up four weeks in a row. They got that print on the, you know, off the inflation last week to help push it to highs. And here we are today taking out some pretty key levels of resistance. So this might be a window we see a little more money move over into that equity market away from the commodity market. Actually, if you go look at the commodity indexes versus the equity indexes, they both turned around in June, commodities lower and equity markets higher and that trend continues. So that's something that's gonna be a little bit watching in here. If we do see some good money strength continue in that equity market, that could keep some pressure on the commodities in general, especially if that anti-inflation play continues. You know, watch crude oil that really broke hard last night, did find a way to get off those lows, but we're trading at levels that look a little bit cautious on the charts. While that's good for the consumer and, and things of that nature, that weakness in crude can spill across the commodity space. I do think that was a big portion of last night's strong sell-off was that tumble that we saw in the crude price due to demand concerns. Well, John, great stuff. If producers want some advice and want to reach out to you and the team there at Total Farm Marketing, what's the best way to do that? Sure, love to reach out, uh, speak to him anytime. Feel free to reach out at 800-334-9779. Shoot me an email at johnh at totalfarmmarketing.com. And don't forget about our website, totalfarmmarketing.com. A lot of great information for producers. Step, Go ahead, step online and check that information out. Feel free to sign up for one of our webinars. Again, it's all available to you on online. John, appreciate the time as always. Thanks for joining us today, sir. Have a great week. We'll talk to you next week. Sounds good. Have a great week. John Heinberg with Total Farm Marketing, our guest today here on Market Talk. Find us online, markettalkag.com. I'm Jesse Allen. Have a great afternoon.